recall that in the previous video we saw this results theorem 531 and its corollary so let's once more see what they say the theorem says that if we have a polynomial px over some field f that is an irreducible polynomial uh, whose degree is say n where n is greater than or equal to 1 then we can find an extension e of the field f whose degree over f is equal to n the degree of the polynomial and such that the extension has a root of the polynomial px and the corollary says that if we have a polynomial fx again over some field f whose degree is at least one then we can find an extension of f having a root of this polynomial fx and such that the degree of the extension over f is less than or equal to the degree of the polynomial it cannot exceed the degree of the polynomial now you can see that the difference between these two results is this here in the theorem px is irreducible here however fx is not necessarily irreducible it may or may not be irreducible now there is one more difference that i should perhaps draw your attention to note that in both the statements we have this thing mentioned that the degree of the polynomial under consideration should be at least one greater than or equal to one now here the difference is that in the first one where our polynomial is irre irreducible there is in fact no real need to separately mention that the degree is greater than or equal to one that is because an irreducible polynomial by definition is a non-zero non-unit polynomial so px here being irreducible cannot have degree zero it cannot be a constant polynomial its degree must be greater than or equal to one so if you don't write here this condition it is not wrong however the author has decided to write it here however we need to explicitly mention that the degree is at least one what that says that equivalently it just means that our polynomial fx is not a constant polynomial and what happens if you take a constant polynomial if you take a non-zero constant polynomial say for example the constant polynomial one in fx where one is of course the multiplicative identity in the field f then not just over f over any extension of f this polynomial will never be equal to zero uh, what i am trying to say here is that you think of this constant polynomial after all as a polynomial in x no value of x will make this equal to the zero element in this field so that's why we need the degree to be greater than or equal to one and this is also the case for in fact any non-constant i mean sorry for any non-zero element in f considered as a constant polynomial okay so with these things out of the way we are now going to go forward and now this corollary itself has its own corollary which is a direct consequence of this corollary however that result is so important that it's given as a theorem and that's how the author also writes he writes although it is in actuality a corollary to this above corollary the next result which we are now going to state is of such importance that we single it out as a theorem so let us now see what this one is about so this is theorem 532 again let fx belonging to our polynomial ring b of degree 
n greater than or equal to 1 then there is an extension e of f of degree at most n factorial such that this extension has n roots of the polynomial fx in which fx in in this extension that is fx has n roots and so a full complement of roots now since we already know that a polynomial of degree n has at most n roots so this theorem once we prove it will uh, give us a an extension e which actually has all the roots of the polynomial fx so let's see the proof now since it, we, we have already said that this is a actually a corollary to the this corollary uh, the proof won't be very difficult will just be a you i mean we will use the previous corollary a number of times to get the proof now in the beginning of the proof the author again makes something clear which we already know that n roots means uh, taking into account multiplicities of any root that may be a uh, root of multiplicity more than one that is for example if you get a root some root which is a field element that is appearing three times exactly three times then we consider it consider them as three roots okay so in that sense counting multiplicity we are saying n roots and in fact it can also happen that a polynomial has all its n roots equal and in fact you can uh, consider say this polynomial over f it has three roots and all of them are equal to 1 okay so counting multiplicity we are saying n roots and this the author mentions in the beginning of the proof hartstein says in the statement of the theorem a root of multiplicity m is of course counted as m roots a root of multiplicity m is of course counted as m roots that is m number of roots right so now the start of the proof is uh, immediately an application of the corollary so because all the things we have here i mean the way this theorem starts is just the things we have in the corollary so immediately we have one extension of f uh, whose degree is 
at most n over f and which has one root, some root of our polynomial. So, by the above corollary, there is an extension E naught of F such that the degree of E naught over F is less than or equal to n and E naught has a root say alpha of our polynomial. Now because alpha is a root of fx, we now know how fx looks in terms of alpha. Precisely what I am trying to say here or rather what the author is trying to say here is this. Thus in E naught x, we have this thing fx equal to x minus alpha times qx, and let us say where qx is some polynomial over E naught over this. Uh, new field, this extension and this uh, qx has degree n minus 1. There are many small, many little things that we should see in these proofs carefully. It is not always that Hartstein intentionally does not write details. You see, in this line, okay, let me just first uh, complete writing the line where q of x has degree n minus 1. That q of x has degree n minus 1 is, uh, you can understand why that is so. It is because of that degree formula. Here, f x has been found as a product of these two polynomials now. And one of them, this one, has degree 1. This one then should have degree n minus 1 because the degree of their product will be the sum of their degrees and that sum should be equal to n. So, this has degree n, this has degree 1. So, this must have degree n minus 1. Now, that uh, little things I was talking about is that you can see here the author has not mentioned that uh, where qx is a polynomial in E naught x. But he has actually mentioned that in a slightly different manner. He has written in E naught x. That itself means that in E naught x, this is a factorization of fx. And that is why qx is coming from here. Okay. qx is not necessarily coming from the polynomial ring fx. It is coming from this slightly larger polynomial. Okay, now using induction,
or continuing like how we are uh, what we are doing here or continuing the above process we get an extension e of this other extension e not such that e has n minus 1 roots of qx and the degree of e over e not is less than or equal to the degree of qx which is n minus 1 uh, well not just the degree of qx but it's factorial so this is uh, this way you can in fact uh, devise an induction proof and that's what the author is uh, writing here so he writes using induction or continuing the this above process of uh, getting polynomials of smaller and smaller degree if this is your induction step say you have assumed that the statement of this theorem is true for polynomials of degree n minus 1 and you want to prove that it is also true for polynomials of degree n and you have assumed fx to be a polynomial of degree n then applying that previous corollary once you have got something like this where now you have a polynomial qx whose degree is n minus 1 and so you can apply now uh, by the induction hypothesis there will be an extension of e not which will have all the roots of this qx so you are applying the induction hypothesis on the polynomial qx okay so that's how we get an extension e of e not so which has n minus 1 roots of qx and whose degree over e not is it satisfies this inequality since every root of fx is either alpha or a root of qx so uh, what uh, this all these things tell us then that we have in fact found counting multiplicities n roots of fx n minus 1 roots of qx we have found here they reside in the extension e and this alpha is also there now is alpha also an element in e yes it is automatically because alpha is there in e not e not is an extension of f which has a root alpha of fx so alpha is in e not and e is an extension of e not so e contains e not among other things e contains e not as a subset so alpha will also be there in e because it is in e not so e contains n roots of fx so that's what we are going to now write since any root of fx is either alpha or a root of qx e has n roots we obtain in e all n roots of fx
but we are not done yet we need to verify that uh, degree inequality now we need to know what happens to this degree this degree by a previous result is equal to the degree of e over e not times the degree of e not over f this thing is less than or equal to n minus 1 factorial and this thing is less than or equal to n here using this inequality this is less than or equal to n and this product is n factorial so that's how you also get the uh, inequality involving the degree of the extension oh we haven't mentioned the result but, but we know what we have used here from the uh, first section and there we have come across this degree formula a degree of an extension of an extension so this completes the proof of this theorem okay so what does the theorem say the theorem says that if we have a polynomial fx over some field f whose degree is at least one then there exists an extension of our field f that has all the n roots of the polynomial fx where n is the degree of the polynomial and such that the extension has is an extension of degree at most n factorial over our base field f now you know already that as n increases n factorial itself drastically increases so a thought may appear on your mind that this i mean this is an upper bound for the degree of this extension over f right it cannot exceed n factorial but the thought may appear on your mind that this n factorial is just too much for example if a n is 5 already n factorial is 120 so you may feel that we don't really need this n factorial and there is a much lower value of an upper bound but that is not the case this uh, bound is attained it's always attained for any n and uh, that is why this bound is a sharp bound okay so now theorem 5 uh, these things will be mentioned but let us see something else a consequence of this theorem theorem Five, three, two. As herbs that given a, or a rather directly, uh, the author says asserts the existence of a finite extension E, in which the given polynomial has n roots. Assert the existence of an extension, a finite extension, in fact, in which the polynomial fx of degree n has all its 
en roots now what is the consequence of this fact if fx is this polynomial where a not is not equal to 0 making the degree equal to n and if n uh, the n roots in roots of fx in e are these counting multiplicities of course they are not necessarily distinct then making use of the corollary to lemma 531 we can factorize the effects as a product of linear factors fx can be factored over e as this you can imagine why this a not is coming outside i mean because uh, if you multiply these linear polynomials ultimately after uh, completing the multiplication you will see that the coefficient of x to the power n is 1 because all these are monic polynomials so their uh, product is also a monic polynomial so in order to get a not we have a not here and if you were thinking how one can get this one from here one uh, first of all takes a not outside so that that makes the rest a monic polynomial where the other coefficients are then a1 divided by a not a2 divided by a not all the way up to a n divided by a not and this divided by a not or in order to get a multiplicative inverse of a not we need a not to be non zero okay so now fx looks like this it has been completely factored as a product of linear factors thus fx splits up completely over e
as a product of linear or first degree polynomials or factors okay because the things we are dealing with are polynomials the factors means polynomials since a finite extension of f exists with this property And that finest extension is of course E, capital E. A finite extension of F of minimal degree also exists with that enjoys the same property. Extension of F. that which also enjoys this property of decomposing fx as a product of linear factors. For example, you have some particular f particular uh, field f and some particular polynomial fx over f then this theorem uh, says that there is a finite extension e of f which has all the roots of this uh, polynomial fx and which of course has some degree over f which, f, which is a positive integer but you may get another uh, extension which also has all the roots of that polynomial but whose degree is smaller than the degree of this extension over f all these uh, this both these extensions are extensions of f that contain both of them contain all the roots of the uh, polynomial under consideration but the other one has degree smaller than this one so you can imagine that you will uh, get an extension that is minimal in this sense that that is you cannot go any lower there is an extension which has all the polynomials i mean uh, all the roots of our polynomial and whose degree is the least possible and if you uh, want to justify the existence of that minimal degree extension rigorously you use the well ordering principle you use the fact that the set of positive integers is well ordered okay so there will be a smallest possible extension or uh, having minimal degree which also has this property for such a minimal extension and that minimal extension will be itself be its minimality will be characterized like this for such 
a minimal extension no proper subfield has the property yes that fx has a decomposition like the this over that subfield that fx factors over it as a product of linear factors you can see uh, one uh, somewhat disturbing analogy between this decomposition and a decomposing dead body okay when someone dies or when a life form dies you know that if the conditions are no matter what the conditions are uh, except some extreme cases the body will slowly decompose all the things all the structures that are there in the body the biological structures the proteins the uh, tissues everything they split up they decompose eventually uh, the I mean the structure is completely lost all the elements go out to the to nature separately so here also this is such a decomposition the original polynomial say you considered this polynomial x square plus 1 in this ring you can imagine this ring as being so icy its temperature so low that this polynomial this dead body does not decompose uh, i mean it just stays like this however if you get to a slightly warmer ring here th this suffers a decomposition Okay, you can imagine the situation like this. So, in that sense, this minimal extension will be like the minimal, say, for the sake of simplicity, let us just consider all these things in terms of uh, having more or less temperature. So, the minimum, minimal extension in this sense will be a minimal increase in temperature that will facilitate this decomposition or that will trigger this decomposition and these ideas prompt a definition this next definition these are only analogies okay uh, i'm not uh, talking about literal dead bodies So we now see this definition. If fx is a polynomial in the from the polynomial ring fx, a finite extension. E of F is said to be a splitting field
over f for our polynomial fx or of our polynomial fx if over e that is in the polynomial ring ex you know what we should write fx uh, factors as the product of linear factors but over no subfield of E. No, no proper subfield of E. Oh, so that thing is written here itself. But over no proper subfield of E. fx factors as a product of linear factors and the theorem that we just saw that guarantees that uh, if you have a polynomial whose degree is at least 1 over some field, then that polynomial has a splitting field, okay, uh, which, is, which will be an extension having these properties. So the author writes, we reiterate that our theorem guarantees for us the existence of splitting fields. In fact, it says even more. Yeah, it says that these things, but more specifically, for it assures that a given polynomial of degree n over f. Uh -huh. that a given polynomial of degree n over f has a splitting field and that uh, extra thing that this theorem says besides existence of splitting field for any such polynomial is that uh, the degree of the splitting field is at most n factorial. Ideally, I should have mentioned that n is greater than or equal to 1, but uh, in the context of the things we are discussing, you, you can understand that is there. Over f has a splitting field E. whose degree over f is at most 
n factorial and this is where the that comment comes we shall uh, see later that this upper bound of n factorial is actually taken on so there is no question of improving this bound n factorial by finding a smaller bound because you cannot find a smaller bound with uh, this much generality maybe if you uh, restrict the extensions e with some further properties then maybe uh, you will get or uh, no i don't think uh, extensions should be restricted but the polynomials the type of polynomials themselves if you somehow restrict with some further conditions then maybe this uh, bound n factorial can be improved that for such polynomials a somewhat smaller bound can be found but in general this n factorial bound is taken on so there is some case where actually the this uh, splitting field whatever splitting field that you can find for a given polynomial there will be some polynomial whose splitting field will have degree exactly equal to n factorial that's what uh, we are saying that this upper bound is actually taken on and more specifically this is true for any n in fact given n we can find a field oh so the field also has to be chosen carefully okay and a polynomial fx over f whose splitting field has degree equal to n factorial over f so b uh, so you can see where we are going with these things we have a polynomial it's a natural question to ask about the roots of the polynomial we have now seen that uh, the original f may not have any root for example x square plus 1 this real polynomial has no root in the field of real numbers but the extension to the field of complex numbers has two roots and that in fact gives all the roots of the polynomial because the degree is 2 so just like that no matter what field you are in and no matter what polynomial you choose over the field there exists an extension which has all the roots and which is a finite extension it's not like you are you have blown things up Uh, without any restriction at all that you uh, keep on putting so many extra things into f that it becomes unmanageable no the extensions that you are considering which has uh, which have the roots of the polynomial are finite extensions as vector spaces over f they are finite dimensional okay that much we can do but then there exists a minimal extension which has all the roots and uh, that extension is called such an extension is called the s splitting field of the polynomial 
okay so we no now know that splitting fields for any polynomial over any field exist so there may be more than one splitting field for a given polynomial if so is there any relationship between them now but before we go to that relationship and all those things there is another way of uh, defining splitting fields which also may be mentioned equivalent to this definition uh, of a splitting field equi okay what is uh, he saying equivalent to this definition we gave of a splitting field for fx over f is the statement e is the splitting field for fx over f if e is a minimal extension of f in which fx has n roots so alternatively he says that an extension e of f will be called a splitting field for a polynomial fx over f if e has n roots i mean e has all the roots of the polynomial fx and e is a finite extension and not just that e is the minimal uh, extension having that property minimal in terms of degree you can understand what i am trying to say instead of uh, talking about uh, splitting up the polynomial fx we are just uh, talking about having all the roots of the polynomial and you already know you have seen things enough to know that these two things are actually equivalent so i am not going to write that here so instead let us uh, write that thing about splitting fields uh, being more than one an immediate question arises given a polynomial fx in some polynomial ring over a field f how are two splitting fields e1 and e2 of fx related at first glance we have no right to assume that they are related at all because uh, unless we investigate the matter uh, deeply just now i mean at this stage there is no reason to assume that two different splitting fields for a polynomial which may exist we don't know 
Our theorem only says that there is at least one splitting field for every polynomial. But for a given polynomial, there may be more. So at this stage, there is no reason to believe that they are at all related. However, as uh, things are in general in mathematics, they are related and they are in fact actually intimately related. They are in fact intimately related we can show that e1 and e2 are isomorphic so in that sense they are actually the same thing But uh, even more than that is true. Isomorphic as fields, of course, by an isomorphism that fixes all the elements of F. So you can uh, imagine the situation here like this. Say you have here f sitting inside these two extensions e1 and e2. They are finite extensions of f and they are the minimal amount you need to extend in order to capture all the n roots of a polynomial fx over f. They have the minimum possible degree over f okay, with this property. Or saying equivalently, they are the minimal extensions such that over each one of them, fx can be split up as a product of linear factors. Now, what we are asserting here or what we are claiming here is that actually these extensions are isomorphic or the same thing as fields by an isomorphism some sort of function that fixes the elements in f that is there exists the ring homomorphism from e1 on to e2 that is one to one and such that if you restrict f to capital F, then you get the identity function. And this we will show uh, along with other things in the next video. So I am ending the video here itself. If you want to say something about these things, you can write in the comment section below. Or you can mail me at my address, which will be there in the description. Uh, the next video is on Friday no? because today is Tuesday. So on Friday we will see vector spaces again from topics in algebra by Hurstein. So with that I am signing off. Uh, see you on Friday with vector spaces. And this Saturday we again have galleons 
uh, group and ring exercise and on Sundays we always have analysis so that's just all uh, so see you on Friday until then this is me Lucifer from a mathematical group have a nice day